We just finished looking at a normal heat cycle. A heat cycle that happens about every six months. A heat cycle that starts with blood on day one. That dog then starts to uh, show blood for the next 10 to 20 days. Um, I didn't go into the specifics of what that looks like and I probably should have done, so we'll just kind of clarify that right now. So the normal heat cycle would be day one, first signs of blood, you might see some swelling going on, behavioral changes a few days beforehand, or more other behavior different towards other dogs. But day one, first signs of blood in a normal heat. Um, I recommend you do your first progesterone test around day six. Progesterone levels are gonna be you know, a one or a two. Uh, they start to climb more rapidly after they get to a one. It takes about five days to get to a one. Between day five and day nine, it goes up about one point a day. So day nine, typically, you're about level of five. This is nanograms per milliliter, by the way, which is what we do in the USA. In Europe, you're using nanomoles, nanograms per nanomole. And so those situations, you have to multiply the numbers by 3.18. So where a five was a dog that was ovulating in America on nanogram scale would be more like, uh, what's five times three is 15, about 17, because it's 3.18. Okay. But normal heat, day nine, we are ovulating. Our progesterone level will be around a five. We will start to see the blood color lighten up typically, going from a deep red color to more of a pinky color. And then as the next few days go on, you'll see more behavior that the dog is interested in being bred, uh, raising up of a tail, um, showing interest in dogs, allowing dogs to sniff on a rear end. And her progesterone level will go up about 70% per day, so day, nine ovulation day 10 level about eight day 11 a level of around 15 which is typically going to be your first ai date and i personally like to do two ais two days apart check the progesterone level has gone up above 20 to know i'm in the right place okay so that is a normal heat and and then the dog's blood will typically start tailing off and becoming lighter and lighter and lighter as it's ready to be bred to the point where you can't even see it anymore but that's not true of all dogs. Some dogs can have a discharge for the next 10 days. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong. It's just that they're, they're a bit different. Okay, so that was a normal. That's what I should have put on the end of the last one. So now here's the split heat. So split heats are, let's just talk about, again, left-hand size nanograms or progesterone levels. And uh, the normal cycle that we'd expect to see, we'll put it in purple, is a slow first few days that it rises up. This is about day five, this is about day nine, then it starts to go up rapidly. That's a normal cycle. And then we're breeding this dog when its progesterone level is a 15 on de about day 11. Normal cycle, okay. So a split heat, everything looks, I'm gonna now put the split heat in purple, in, in brown. So the split heat is exactly the same to begin with. You see the first signs of blood, you might do a progesterone level and see the numbers being around a one or a two, and then what happens is this dog just starts doing some stuff. And I mean, the graph I'm drawing here is not, it's, it's not every dog, obviously, but things happen. Then all of a sudden we get this normal heat cycle. This here, this is the split. This is the split heat. This is the thing that will drive you up the wall and, 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 and cost you money because you've got to have lots of tests done to find out when she starts to roll up on her numbers because we're going to breed her again when she's at a 15. And that might be a delay of a few days. It might be a delay of a few weeks even. Um, so this thing can really get stretched out in the middle here as the progesterone levels are just kind of bouncing around. Why is this happening? Typically a relatively immature dog, an adolescent, adolescent dog that is something between a year and maybe a year and a half old. We see this quite a lot. And certainly this is one of the reasons we don't breed dogs when they're less than a year old, because you're unlikely to be successful. Besides the fact that in maturity and their weight and everything else is probably not where you want it. So the cutoff point for us is a one year old dog, we're not gonna breed it. A one year old dog, we're probably not gonna succeed anywhere. We're probably gonna be wasting your money on tests. But you know, you can still see this in a dog that is um, you know, a year and a half old, where you've got this protracted heat cycle that takes some time. And I can t all I can tell you this is, people will say, well, what does it mean? It, we don't know when her numbers are gonna go up like this. All we can do is test, and probably test every couple of days to find out what's going on so we can catch this and get a bread and hopefully end up at the back end of this here in another two months with a successful litter. Um, right, okay, so split heats, what can you do about it? Nothing other than just continue to test. There are inexpensive ways to test. You can do things like vaginal cytology, which you could do at home if you had a microscope and some stain, 
where you basically take a swab, put it up the vulva with a Q-tip, roll it out onto a, um, a slide, stain it, look it under a microscope, and you can look at vaginal cytology. And what happens is, is what you will see is um, nuclei, you'll see um, cells that look like little fried eggs. And they will go to looking like cornified, which is basically just flat objects with wrinkly, with, with traffic, and that's not a very good diagram. It's not quite what they'll look like. They'll actually look more like this. Kind of jagged sided with no central, with no central nucleus. That's what's called cornified. And when a dog is 100% cornified, you're normally in the right place. So you can go look at that yourself not do any tests of this and wait for these to start to disappear and then do another test. That's probably the least expensive way. Or go buy our progesterone machines, $9 a test you can do yourself. All right, so uh, let's see, we've gone long enough on this. So there's your split heats. What can you do about splits? You just gotta go test your way through it, come out of the back end and get the dog bred in the right place. Okay. Next one's gonna be silent and absent heats. That one's ticked off the board. All right. Hey, thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.